they figured out how to make it work for them without turning away from life in the world of it's not enough. Now come back with me and imagine what it would be like to not have to break your money into teeny tiny weeny pieces like that. For me, that was a very difficult challenge because I'd been in survival mode, like living paycheck to paycheck so long, I didn't have a clue what it would feel like. So I kept learning and engaging with people who did, and it started to rub off. What if you just knew that there was always a pot, there was always enough money? You're listening to the Unshackle Your Life podcast with Debbie Colburn, the place to break through all of the hidden things that hold each of us back, things that scare us and things that challenge us and things we're just plain fed up with. We talk all things money and business, big and small. We dive deep, we get real and we get raw, discovering and exploring what is really possible for you. It's a restart. If you've ever struggled with shame, worry, or just plain self-doubt, if you've ever thought it's not enough when you looked at your bank account or your credit card, if you're sick and tired of living a cycle of crisis to crisis to crisis, no matter whether it's in your personal life, in your business, or your relationships, then this is where you need to be. We'll bring you new ideas, tips, and tactics, and connect you to the resources to get you unlocking your own shackles and release your unique abilities. No matter what's going on in your life right now, maybe you're in survival mode, just barely getting by, living day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck. Maybe you're in a job or a career or running a business that is leaving you on empty, depleted, uninspired, or anything in between. I've got you back. Ready? So buckle on up, take a deep breath, and join me in a conversation about jumpstarting your life and breaking free of your shackles and create that thing that you've been scared to ask for. Welcome to episode 84. Buckle in. Today we're talking about one of the most touchy topics, money. Making your money go further, stretching your budget, something along that line. So that's my general idea for this podcast episode. But why? Why do we even need to stretch our money? And what does stretching our money really mean? What does it feel like? And what's causing you to think you actually have to stretch your money as far as you possibly can? Bet you're not surprised to hear me say the words scarcity mindset, are you? Simply put, there's an inner dialogue on autopilot in your head telling you it's not enough. It's never enough, is it? So where does that come from? Well, not to sound like a broken record, you do remember those vinyls. Most of our thinking is generational, passed down from grandparents to parents to kids, generation after generation. And it isn't until you start seeing the patterns and interrupting them that stuff changes for you. And guess what? It falls into that same category as telling your kids to eat everything on their plate. No hiding the peas under the knife. I'm from that generation that belonged to something called the Clean Plate Club. Anybody else charter members in that? Yeah, I see all those hands out there. And we wonder why in 2021, we've got an obesity epidemic because our minds have subconsciously been programmed by hearing meal after meal that it was wasteful or about starving kids in Biafra, a breakaway state in Nigeria that no longer exists or phrases designed to make you feel guilty like I spent my hard earned money for your dinner or like we did, I literally heard my parents say this Like when I wrote this podcast episode, it was just a couple of weeks ago, but literally last night at the dinner table, 
and they're 87 and 88, they were talking about, you should be grateful because your dad and his brother had to sit on the back porch and if something didn't get eaten right away, someone else would take it away from you. Like the guilt that you don't even realize is sitting inside your head if you don't eat every little morsel on your plate. Wow, and that still prevails. Now I'm just gonna go on a little bit of a tangent here, but you just have to look at what, whenever there's a weather, whenever there's a disaster, whenever there's anything that's impending, pandemic, perfect example, everybody goes into this hoarding mode because there might not be enough. Life doesn't end if you don't have toilet paper. It really, really doesn't. There's a whole entire society the Asian culture that up until very, very, very recently actually didn't use toilet paper. They just simply don't. You just have to get used to the hole in the floor and washing yourself with this little pot of water. But hell, it's a lot cleaner anyway. But I digress. We're talking about money in this episode. But you could see how it's pervasive. It gets into all these different areas of your life. So, so what is stretching your money? How do you create your financial world so that you can cover your basic, your basics, you know, your shelter, your groceries, the basic four walls of, of survival, and also tick off the things that you really want to do? Well, my answer to that is you simply have to make more money. But not just make more money, you simply have to have more money coming into your life. There's always enough. The world is overflowing with abundance. And I hate to break it to you, it's not just available for that 1%, what people call those rich, greedy billionaires. It simply isn't. They just think differently. And you can use some of their thinking without being rich and greedy and mean and nasty and, and so on, because those are just media stories. And I might be going in a little too woo on this. You might just have bristled and your resistance is showing up, showing its face because you're thinking, horse crap, that's BS, Debbie. But the world is vibrating with money. There is a, and there is a very distinct vibration. And you only have to become just that little bit more self-aware of what you're thinking, what you're feeling, you know, what, what's going on inside you when you get in the situation where you're faced with maybe there just simply isn't enough money. And I speak from deep personal experience on this. I think you guys get that now, right? I can almost predict with 100% accuracy when a financial challenge will show up in my life and when money will simply be flowing in with ease. The challenges are minimal now. They don't send me into financial chaos and a world that felt like nothing I ever did worked long term, that I blamed on the effed up banking system that penalizes those who don't have lots of money. And I just want to put a caveat in here. I truly do believe that our banking system is screwed up. Our credit system is screwed up. Our reliance on credit scores is screwed up. That whole system was created for back in the 70s. It, it doesn't work right now. It's so broken. Now, I also want to put this caveat in there is I haven't yet hit my goal of $600,000 annual revenue that I set. That's my big goal for, five, for the five years. And we're kind of mid that right now. So it's not that I'm super flush with revenue and low expenses, but I'm so much better off than I was 10 years ago and five years ago and even just six months ago. And I was a super skeptic 10 years ago. I know it was all my thinking that was driving my habits, 100%. Each time I work with my life coach, Roman Garcia, and you guys remember him from the interview I did in episode 81. And if you haven't yet listened to that, that is our biggest downloaded episode ever. It seems like I'm working through yet another limiting belief that when we dig, 
it's related to my money thinking. There's a saying that says, new level, new devil. It's, we're constantly working on these things. You'll always be working on these things. And the thing is that you need to be able to see the difference between a reality and a story. We think our money situate. We overthink that money situation. It's very, very simple. What you have available, what's in your bank, your PayPal account, in gift cards, in your wallet, in change, deep down under the cushions, in your cars, you know, where the, the gear shift thing is and everything in there. It's simply a fact. And I'm not saying that you really do have enough money. You might or you might not. But what you have right now is a fact. Your reality, it is simply just a number. Remember guys, doing this money work really is a super skill and it's made up of a whole bunch of micro ones. And the first micro one, and it's what you might call a first world principle, is that you, you, you must be able to differentiate between what is a fact what the real honest to God fact is versus what is the thought or the feeling or the meaning that you've created about that fact. So let me give you a perfect example of a fact and then I'll, I'll ease into the story. I have $5,000 in my checking account. Fact. Simple as that. I only have $5,000 in my account. And that means I don't have enough. I can't pay the bills. I haven't saved as much as I wanted to this month. I suck at saving money. All that type of stuff, those are thoughts, a feeling, a meaning that you assigned about you to a simple fact. I have $5,000 in my checking account. Does that make sense to everybody? So if it doesn't, I want you to, I, I want you to make sure that you reach out to me by DM on Instagram, by comment in one of the, in the, in the post on Facebook, send me a message to support at momentsforexcellence.com. However you want to do it, reach out to me and tell me I don't understand fact from fiction. Simple as that. And are, are you starting to see where you're doing that in your life? or in your business, how we even do it in our jobs with the company's money. So I just, uh, I was talking to a friend just recent, just recently. He's, he's a very successful business owner. He, um, he owns multiple franchise locations in one of the larger franchises here in, uh, here in Canada. And he started, he started a new business and he was, he was kind of on a little bit of a rant with me telling me about one of his employees that he'd give him a, him a simple task. He wanted him to find a, um, a cell phone that could handle the customer inquiries and stuff that were coming that were coming in. Didn't want any fail points. He just wanted uh, the best tool for being able to do this. And two days later, a decision hadn't been made, and the the person tasked with it was struggling between two different plans that were thirty five dollars apart. And it, he was pulling his hair out. He's like, "Why does that happen?" Well. That's because the person who was tasked with it actually was bringing his own personal money story about having to get the cheapest and, and you know, having to stretch the money the, the farthest and so on into the business where that actually is not necessary. So what exactly does stretching your money look like? How does that feel? What are we doing to stretch it? How did we get there and how do we get out of it? Because every one of you knows that no matter what you're stretching, eventually there is a breaking point. Because seriously, wouldn't we like to be able to just sometimes, no, not just sometimes, for the rest of our lives and for the rest of our family's lives, be able to do what we really would like to do to buy what we like to buy. And I'm not talking about buying just because you can, buying to impress others or to fill a emotional hole inside you. Been there, done that, all of those. 
you know, things like, I want to buy a jet, so I'm just going to be financially irresponsible by putting myself in debt to buy the jet, even though I just discovered that flying private isn't out of reach. It isn't really so far out of reach. I'm not talking about those things. But how do we find true happiness within us, enjoyment, making our money, our friend, having it work for us and with us? And how do we have that great relationship with money and not what most people have, which is a codependent one, that pressing need to have your money? It's like, you know, anything about codependence, you will understand what I'm talking about. And if you don't, just do a little bit of work on codependence. And we're going to talk about that down, down the road. Does anybody relate to that? Like you're so dependent on your business, giving your income. You're so dependent on having that paycheck that if it fails at any point in time or it's delayed by a day or even an hour, your life falls apart. I know. Everybody's going, holy crap, I didn't realize I had a codependent relationship with my money. It's bad enough with that girl I don't like anymore. Huh. But honestly, if you're trying to stretch your money, that's like paying someone minimum wage and expecting them to work 24-7 at their highest output. It's like you're taking advantage of someone and you're not actually getting the most for your money. So imagine... That piece of money that you have. Now I want you to close your eyes. So guys, really work with me on it. Work with me on this. Imagine that you've got a hundred dollar bill. Eyes are closed, right? It's nice and it's crisp. It's a beautiful hundred dollar bill. And I don't know what color that is in the United States. I'm guessing it's green. In Canada, it's brown. Or you have five crisp green 20s that are fresh from the mint. Let's imagine that together. you are holding that $100 in your hands gently. It's just like feathers. Now, I want you to tear those up into tiny, tiny, little, teeny, weeny pieces and look at them. What could they do for you now? I bet most of you felt your body recoil at the thought because you know the answer, don't you? If you guys will let me, I'm just going to tell you a funny story. I've always used, used biodegradable poop bags for my dogs. And when I had my training business, I always needed to have lots of them around for the business. Because, you know, someone forgets their poop bag or the dog poops more than they think they're going to poop. Or someone else forgot and they were being nice and kind and picked up somebody else's. And I had bought three boxes of them and they're 400 bags per box. And I had some in my car and with five dogs, there was always a lot of poops. But I didn't use them up as fast as I thought I would. And one day I opened a new box. I remember this so distinctly on a on a... On an interstate going down the eastern eastern U.S., I I pulled out one, and I gently opened it as I normally do, and I was sliding my hand into it like a glove, and as I went to pick up the poop with the nice brand new bag, can you guess what happened? Yep, it broke into a million little teeny weeny pieces because it's biodegradable, and that result never actually crossed my mind. So that's what you're doing. You're breaking those bills up as small as you possibly can to see how many pieces you possibly can get so that you can get something with this little tiny piece or you can pay that bill with this little tiny piece or you can help someone out with this little tiny piece and you can with this little piece over here, this little little piece which is the last one that you have left because it's where we pull everything through from is the grocer groceries. So what can you get? It's exhausting. That's exactly what budgeting is. As well, you know, budgeting is a tool. But if you aren't actively working on building better money thinking, budgeting is simply trying to stretch your money as far as you possibly can. And the reality is, budgeting is not empowering. 
No matter what Dame, Dave Ramsey says or Susie Orman or Valvas Oxlade, it sucks the life out of you. Just like David Box, give up the Starbucks you love, Latte Factor does. And it really doesn't help you in the long term. And it really isn't sustainable as a standalone tool. Is it a tool? Is it a valuable tool? Absolutely. And there are some people who are able to do that and embrace an abundant life. But they don't live in scarcity mode. It just happens to be the right tool for their unique makeup and where they are in life with their money stories and so on. They figured out how to make it work for them without turning away from life and living in the world of it's not enough. Now come back with me and imagine what it would be like not to have to break your money into little teeny weeny pieces like that. And for me, that was a very, very difficult challenge because I'd been in survival, living in paycheck to paycheck mode for so long. I didn't have a clue anymore. No, I never had a clue to start with what it would feel like. So I just kept learning and engaging with people who did. And it started to rub off. I started to do some of the things that they were doing. I started to reframe some of the, uh, the things that I was thinking. And what if you just knew that there was always a pot? There was always enough money. One of the affirmations that I use is there's always enough. Now remember I talked about your reality. The reality is you might only have $1,200 in the bank. Or maybe you have $120,000 in the bank. Or maybe it's $1.2 million in the bank. Or anything else. But you have a very, very different lifestyle. That is a fact. Step into the place where instead of staring sadly at your handful of teeny weeny pieces, you could say today, I am going to take my family out to a movie. Okay, I know that's that's a novel concept in the pandemic world of late 2021. And I know there are many places in the world that you still can't do that. But here in North America and in most of the G8 countries, you can. There's some great movies coming out. I saw some, some trailers the other day. So maybe you want to. But one side of your brain is saying, if I do that, I know they've got some great deals on the movies right now. But that's going to cost me $55. And that leaves me $45 for everything else this week. And guys, don't get hung up on the numbers. I'm just using a simple example. But what if you thought, okay, I want to take my family out for movie night. How could I make that happen? What could I do so that I didn't end up in that place where I'm having to rob Peter from, rob from Peter to pay Paul? And I have to give up on some of my groceries. We can't buy that fancy cheese this week because this is all the money that I've got. It's an either or discussion in there. That is a massive tip for you. If you're finding that your decisions regarding money, abundance, wealth, whatever you want to call it. And honestly, it could even be food. If you are making either or decisions... If it has to be either this or that, then you are living in scarcity. And I want you to start thinking, why not both? Why not both? And if I could, what would I have to do to make that happen? What would I have to change? How would I have to think? There's no question about it. You would have to change some of your thinking. But that's what we're doing. That's what I'm helping you do. We're working little bit by little bit on these, on these sneaky little stories. And then you would have to go in your own way, in whatever way you feel pulled to. What could I do to make some additional money? How could I get those tickets to see the movie with my family? And here's the thing. When we're stuck in survival thinking, I have to make it stretch. It's just not enough. We close off the idea funnel. Most people have them, ideas, but the more you are stuck in that place trying to survive, just getting by, the less open your idea generator is. 
your funnel has a big friggin' plug in it. It's there. Everything you need. The seeds are already in your head. This is what the crazy thing is about all the whole, the whole money stuff. All of your answers are in your head already. You already know. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You know that can be solved. But for the life of you, no matter how many different directions you twist the sides or rotate an individual panel, you cannot figure out how to solve it. So let's go back. We've got $100. We want to take our family out for a movie night. You know, you know that ballpark, it's going to cost us $55. But we only have that 100 to do a whole bunch of things, including groceries. How can we make that happen without falling into the trap of it's not enough? Well, first off, anybody that works for the movie company. And when I say movie company, it could be the theater it's showing at. It could be, you know, it could be one of the family, uh, one of your kids' friends, a coach. It could be someone in your business circle. Anything like that. Have you ever, here's the thing. Have you ever worked on a contract with advertising people? Is there anybody who might be able to get those tickets for you at a better price? Is there anybody that's looking to give them away? Are there any contests going on that you might be able to enter because the prize is tickets? Ideas, 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 ideas. What I'm saying is all those different opportunities are out there. There is never just one path to get or achieve something and still be in integrity, to be humble, to be grateful, and to not be thinking it's not enough, or be afraid to ask for something. And I'm going to take a short detour down the woo-woo path, because clearly the woo-woo path is calling to me today, because I don't know. I'm sure I've shared this with you guys before, but if you had asked me about Tony Robbins, if you had asked me about self-development, if you had asked me about anything woo-woo, Anything that was not left brain, you know, that logical thinking, logical rationale that accountants have, 2011 and prior, I would have told you that you were nuts, that it didn't work. I would tell you to go stuff yourself. I would have said it sent prickles up my back. It would have just, it was like, oh, in my parlance, you know, for my generation, I would have said, gag me with a spoon. But the reality is, I was like many of you might be, or might have been, or still are, very resistant to looking at other ways. And the reality is, I've got a lot of realities here, you can literally just set an intention, just give your brain a job to do while you sleep. Before you go to bed tonight, sit with your brain, sit with your mind, and say, brain, I have a problem. You simply tell it this. I need a solution to. I would like to find, I would like to get five tickets for my family to take them to the movies in the next three weeks. Please find me a solution. It's the last thing you do before you go to bed and you just set it free in your brain. And because it's the last thing that you do, your brain is then going to take that it's going to start working overtime on finding you a solution. And I tell you guys, it works. It really, really, really works. I have repeatedly, over the last two or three years, I've been blown away by how powerful it is. Just let my brain work without me working my brain. And so it might not happen the next day, but things will start popping up in your vision. You'll start seeing things that you didn't see before. Um, opportunities that might not even have been in there before. All of a sudden open up. Hell, it could be someone calling you up and saying, Hey, would you like to come and work for us? We think you've got the perfect skills at, you know, whatever they're looking for. And guess what the benefits are? You can take your, you can, you can come to see any movie you want with your family anytime. And it starts from day one, you come and work for us, and guess what? It doesn't have to be full-time, it could be part-time. Uh, yeah, sounds cool. If it's a job that appeals to you. And just because an opportunity shows up for you, does not mean that you have to take it. You can simply go back to your brain the next night and go, 
a little more specific about what you want. Okay? And that's kind of how it happens. It's so, it is like the simplest thing in the world. So the same thing happens when you're grocery shopping and we all have to eat. So it doesn't have to be either or. If you're grocery shopping and you like to cook a little bit like me, but as time goes on, I like to cook less and less. So when I do cook or I do bake, I feel like I really feel inspired to do it. It doesn't have to be either you do or you don't. So money and money and food are very similar. They seem to they seem to go hand in hand because they come from the same thinking. You don't just have to just live by going shopping yourself and cooking yourself and you don't just have to move 100% of the time over to the Hello Freshes, the Good Foods, the Martha and Marley's or whatever food delivery or grocery delivery service or Instacart that you choose. You don't have to move full time over there all the way. You can build a hybrid. And that's what I'm saying. You, but, but if you're blocked off, you can't do any of this. And here's the thing. It's never ever carved in stone it never has to be permanent and that's the challenge for some reason we as humans think whatever change we make it scares the hell out of us because we think it's permanent well no they're not if it doesn't work just change it make another decision make another choice try something out give it a chance it'll always be uncomfortable but then when you run with it when you test it out if it's really working for you, then go all in on it. As I've said before, you will always have to do about four to five, maybe six different kicks at the can to get it to stick. There's the odd time that it sticks right away, but that's because you've been paying attention to the uh, the little changes you've been, you haven't been paying attention to those little changes you've been making along the way. As an example, it took me a number of times to move over to a, a, like a 95% vegan eating style. And my initial start on that was with HelloFresh. And I just did little pieces and little pieces. And I started to recognize the things that were working and the things that weren't working. But I knew that it wasn't the full solution for me. But I knew it was helping me out more. So just on that topic, uh, a lot of you are going, HelloFresh, good food. Oh, those are expensive. Well, the answer is that was one of the reasons that I held back even trying to start with because that's the thinking that was going on in my head. But then I went, okay, but what is that holding me back from? This extra weight, this not feeling great and so on. And I went, okay, let's put thinking on, let's just get rid of that thinking. Let's blow up that block. Now, because I'd already been doing some work on what works for me and what doesn't work for me in all the areas, when I tried the 100% vegan thing where I was making everything myself, I absolutely hated it. Absolutely friggin' hated it. The results my body was screaming for, my body loved it. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, let's do this. Yay, yay, rah, rah, rah. But the program and the recipes and all that while it worked beautiful, beautifully for me, the prep time and the volume of veggies and fruit that you had to buy and make, I just hated it. And I, and I try not to use that word, but it just, it, ugh, it was awful. It's like the recipes were all for eight servings or six servings, and I live by myself. And the last thing I want is eight servings of anything. I want one, maybe two. So that piece threw me off. As... Things will on your money story. And it threw me off enough that I fell off it for a while. And, and you know, what was also really weird, and this is another for you, if you're someone like me who has, who's constantly working through this weirdo fear, this fear of success, is that my results of going to a 99.9% .9 vegan lifestyle were mind-boggling. They were so insanely good and that feeling was so amazing that it scared me it scared the crap out of me 
And that's a lot of what happens. And that's what happens with money. When you're changing your money story, your food story, your health story, your business story, anything that feels so good, it almost slides into the world of unworthiness. It could be that you're not trusting yourself. You have some trust issues with yourself. It could, that that was a big one for me. Or a fear of what other people might think of how you got those results. Think about it. When you lose a lot of weight, what are people saying? That can't possibly be healthy. Oh, how is that helpful? Or any one of a zillion fears and blocks and beliefs about yourself. It was scary. I just didn't know how to be that person yet. My system system couldn't handle the time, but I recognized it. Key, key, key. Self-awareness. And I'm back working through it. And I know where I fall off. Where I fall off most is around my family because they are a completely different eating style. They're like a bunch of carnivores. And it's a challenge. So I have to build different habits to go. And it's the same with money. It's in our families, whether it's food or whether it's money, those um, changes, changes in lifestyle, changes in habits, so on. My family and probably yours too struggle with understanding why and how I do it. Why is it important to me? They just don't get it. And it's important that you identify those things because as great as your intentions are, you do have to find a way to create create structure and boundaries and habits and tools to be able to carry your to, to carry your success, to carry your habits across when you're not in your own home. Because in your home, in many ways, it's pretty easy to start and changing habits and get them to stick and to keep them. But as soon as you get in another environment, it goes off the rails. So it's a little bit of a longer episode. I really wanted to talk to you about that and get you thinking about you don't have to be stretching your money. Yes, for the next little while, you'll probably have to be doing that. But I want you to recognize when you're doing it and be aware when you do it. Catch yourself. I want to help. I really want to help you start recognizing when you're trying to stretch your money because at a certain point, your money's going to break. It always, always does. There just isn't going to be any more stretch to it, right? Because we all know what happens when you pull on anything long enough, eventually there's a breaking point. And what happens when you get to that breaking point, and most people will hit that breaking point, they say, this isn't worth it. And they go right back to doing what they were doing. They grab another thing and they just keep trying to pull and stretch and pull and stretch and pull and stretch till, guess what? It breaks again. Another breaking point that in real life, it shows up as crisis after crisis after crisis, drama on top of drama, on top of drama. And when I say crisis after crisis after crisis, it could be a couple of months between a crisis. It could be every year you get a crisis. It could be every week. Oh my God, it it literally could be every day. But that's not you, is it? Because you see, can you see the breaking points in your own life? Whatever you're trying to do, you've stretched it to its breaking point. It's just the way you've structured your life up until that point in time. So sit back, have a look, and try and observe your life, you know, without trying to force it. This is the kind of thing that you sit down in a chair in a quiet time. You can even put some headspace on, you know, so 90 minutes of sound. You can listen to to some meditation, stuff like that, and ask yourself the question, where am I trying to stretch something? That's a tongue twister. Because I believe it's not enough. How about your time? And with that, I am just going to leave you. This week, pull out your journal and let the words flow on this question. Where am I trying to stretch my money? So we're here. We're at the end. Time for the question I ask everyone at the end of each episode. Take your time. Give it some thought. 
What is the worst thing that could happen if you unlock just one of your shackles today? And just as a little bit of a twist on that, as a second part to that, ask yourself, what is the best thing that could happen if I unlock just one of my shackles today? Hey, if this podcast got you thinking, please make sure you're subscribed and share it with anyone who needs to hear this. The link is in the show notes and please drop us a review on whatever podcast player that you're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it. And make sure that you drop over to our website, debbiecolburn.com forward slash links forward slash that's D-E-B-B-I-E-C-O-L-B-O-U-R-N dot com forward slash links forward slash to get our brand new seven day quick action guide and to check out what's coming up in 2022. And please make sure that you're following us on LinkedIn and on Instagram just to keep you on your toes as a slightly different name at MS Debbie Colbert.